Brothers and sisters to the church at the dome. We're extremely grateful that you chose to worship with us here at St. John's Baptist Church of Scotch Plains, New Jersey. Let me say happy Father's Day to all fathers. Thank you for your faithfulness to God and your family. Thank you for being prophets and priests of your homes. Thank you for the love and encouragement and coaching and direction and even the discipline that you provided for your children. Thank you for being heroes to look up to and to emulate. In times like these, we need men who are truly fathers and father figures to our children and those men need to be honored and if nobody else tells you from my mouth to your ears you are appreciated to all of those tuning in with us today thank you and I pray that you are blessed by this morning's worship experience let us open up with a word of prayer God we're grateful and we thank you you've been mighty good to us Lord, you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And for that, Lord, we say thank you. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, you've brought us safe thus far. And God, we are forever grateful. Thank you for this day. Thank you for how you have blessed us, God. And God, we pray that you would have your way in this place. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Melt us and mold us. Shape us and make us. Break us if you have to, Lord. But whatever you do, use us for your service. 
Have your way, we pray, God. And in the end, we'll give you glory. We'll give you praise. We'll give you honor. We'll lift you up and exalt you. For you alone are worthy to be praised. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're in the midst of doing, God. In any way you bless us, we'll give you glory. We'll give you praise. We'll give you honor. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Let every heart say, Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Psalm 1. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He's like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season. And its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like a chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto our God. I am weak and I need thy strength and power to help me over my weakest hour. Let me through.
Good morning. Today's announcements. On behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Sean T. Wallace Sr., First Lady Carita Wallace, and the entire St. John's family, we want to wish every father a happy Father's Day. Weekly prayer call. Please join us at 7 a.m. on Sunday and Wednesday mornings for our St. John's family prayer call led by Pastor Wallace. The dial-in number is 425-436-6308. Access code 312-522. St. John's is on the radio. Join Pastor Wallace and the St. John's family every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. on Tap On Radio, 1070 on the a.m. dial. You can download the Tap On Radio app, click on radio, and click on the broadcast. Join us on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. for Zoom Bible study. An email notification is sent out on Tuesdays. However, if you do not currently receive notifications from the church, please call or email us your email address so we can add you to the weekly invite. If you are in need, the church is here for you. Please call the church and leave a detailed message and a deacon will be in touch with you. We are extremely thankful for your continued financial support to St. John's. Whether your giving is online by Simple Give, mail to the church, or during a drive-by, we thank God for your continued stewardship and pray his many blessings upon you. If you find that our services have been a blessing to you and you have not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so and click the notification button so you receive an alert when new services are posted. Additionally, if you're looking for a church home, do consider St. John's. Call the church office and leave a message and we will be in touch with you. As we pray for the sick and the elderly, let us also pray one for another in this difficult time. Here at the Dome, the building may be closed, but the church is still open. We wish you and your family good health, stay safe, and be strong as we will get through this better together. Have a blessed day.
Amen. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Romans, the book of Romans chapter 8, beginning with verse 37. Romans chapter 8, beginning with verse 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of God for the people of God. God, again, we're grateful for this time together. We pray even now, God, that you will have your way in this place. It's preaching time, God, and we pray that you'd sit us down, that you might stand up. Pray, God, that you will move in this message in the mighty name of Jesus. This is our prayer. We pray it in Jesus' name. Let every heart say amen. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. I want to talk from this thought today. Don't give up and don't give in. My brothers and sisters, I've come this morning to try to encourage somebody not to give up and not to give in. I want some young person to know that even when you feel like giving up, don't give up. Somebody that's going through right now, please don't give up and don't give in. Don't do it because in the words of that five heartbeat song, no matter how hard it gets, we haven't finished yet. There's so much of life ahead. We've got so much to do. And I know that sometimes it's difficult to not want to give up, especially when you feel like everything is against you. It's got to be hard when you try to get ahead, but it seems like we just keep falling back. It's got to be rough when you try to do the right thing, but the wrong thing keeps you bound. It's difficult when issues are compounded by pandemics, and pandemics are compounded by injustice, and injustice is compounded by disaster, and disaster is compounded by death, and death is compounded by depression. Now, when it seems like every decision you make ends up being the wrong one, when a day of fun at the beach with some young folks turns into a night of death and disaster when it seems like there's no reprieve no rest for the weary no reward of peace and no reassurance of tomorrow um, like life has a way of making you feel like everything is against you no matter how many strides you make it doesn't seem good enough no matter how much you accomplish stuff still seems to fall apart no matter how many victories you experience you keep facing defeat. Some folks may be able to relate to that Peanuts cartoon uh, where Lucy tells Charlie Brown, sometimes I feel like we're not communicating. Uh, you, Charlie Brown, are a foul ball in the line drive of life. Uh, you're often in the shadow of your own goal post. You're a miscue. You're a third putt on the 18th green. Uh, you're a 7-10 split in the 10th frame. You drop the ride and real in the lake of life. You missed your free throws. You're a shank nine iron, uh, a call third strike, a bug on a windshield of life. Do you understand? Have I made myself clear? Some of us may feel like this description that Lucy gives of Charlie Brown. We feel like we just keep coming short. Uh, it just seems like life has a way of sucking the success away from us. Uh, friends hinder our success. Family puts a damper on our success and the world rejects success and sometimes it feels like God uh, doesn't even care about your success. And if there are any honest people this morning, I know that I'm saved to the bone, but in my humanity, in my frailty, in my flesh, I feel like giving up sometimes. I just feel like giving in. I pray that the Lord will bless my efforts and instead of it working for me, it ends up working against me. 
I asked the Lord to bless this endeavor, and instead of things running smoothly, the bumps in the road keep getting bigger. I pray for healing, but sickness gets worse. I pray for reconciliation, and the relationship still comes to an end. I pray for folks to draw nearer, but instead they move further away. I pray for better communication, but experience the feeling of a lesser connection. I pray for a better job with better pay and more appreciation and I keep getting overlooked. I pray for the salvation of my family and they get further and further away from the church. I pray for unity and I still keep seeing division. I pray for love and forgiveness. I pray that God would do something strange in this time so that we can come together as opposed to being divided. And what I keep seeing is hatred and cruelty and division even in the body of Christ. And if I could be totally honest and transparent this morning, there are times when it just feels like maybe God is not interested in the success in these areas. I mean, if we can take off the super spiritual hat just for a moment, Sometimes it feels like God must not want things to get better. Like God must not want things to turn around. I mean, why does God keep allowing all of these things to be? And though nobody may verbalize this out loud, I know that there's some people listening to me today who have probably felt like God doesn't seem interested in their success. Everybody else around me is experiencing success in these areas but me. In the words of Effie from Dream Girls, what about me? What about what I want? What about what I need? What about me? But I stopped by here on my way to glory because it's just this type of thinking that needs to be dealt with. It's that thought process that needs to be addressed because it has hindered the saints from allowing the vision and achieving success and experiencing victory to come to fruition. It's been that mentality that has kept the church stagnant. It has been that type of rationalization that has halted growth and development and transformation. It's that kind of thinking that makes us settle for mediocrity and never strive to do better and when that is the mode of reasoning no wonder we end up wanting to give up and wanting to give in Paul helps us out in verse 18 of the 8th chapter of the book of Romans by giving us the right perspective Paul says for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us Paul was fully aware that it's a matter of perspective and we should always be aware that it's always a matter of perspective. Perspective allows us to understand that there's a difference between success and significance. And while we may be and want success, God is looking for us to be significant. That's, that's a whole nother message. Perspective allows us the ability to understand the difference between what we may want for our lives and what God's will is for our lives and how we need to be asking God, what is your will so we can get a proper understanding of the path that we have to travel? Maybe it was not meant for that thorn to be removed from my life. Because God's will was that I understand that his grace is sufficient for me and his strength is made perfect in my weakness. Maybe it wasn't designed for me to experience the happily ever after because God needed me to take my focus off of them so I can put my focus on him. Maybe that job and promotion you were seeking was not the plan that God had because that particular move would have hindered you from the move that God had in store for you. Maybe this is my cross that I'm supposed to bear so that I can be stronger 
and wiser and better for the journey that's ahead of me because if I have run with the footmen and they have wearied me, how will I be able to contend with the horses? The problem is that when certain things don't go our way, we assume that God is working against us, keeping us from experiencing happiness and depriving us of what we think that we deserve and what we should receive. Many of us have become our worst enemies because of past failures, disappointments, we're full of doubt, anxiety, and fear. And our fears paralyze us and hinder our potential because, of, uh, because instead of enduring and persevering and pushing through and moving forward, we end up giving up and giving in. Yet, in spite of all his imperfections, even Charlie Brown had dreams and hopes for a better future. And as a result, he never gave up and he never gave in. And somebody under the sound of my voice this morning needs to know that you can take a lesson from the theology of Charlie Brown. Here it is. When you feel like giving up, don't give up and don't give in. I know it seems hard, but don't give up. I know things are stacked against you, but don't give in. I know the pressures of life are weighing you down. Don't give. Up. I know it seems like too much for you to bear, but don't you dare give in even though you might be standing right smack in the middle of your dilemma. Whatever it is you're going through, remember God is not dead. And he's got the whole world in his hands. My brother, my sister, this is not the end, the bottom is not going to fall out. The sky is not falling. And we can handle the pressure of life if we have the right perspective. Be not dismayed. Whatever betides you, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. Uh, the text is tailored to teach us a couple of reasons why we can't give up. <clears throat> the first reason why we can't give up is because God is for us. Now, that may seem very simple or elementary, insignificant to others, but that means everything to me because according to the text in verse 31, if God is for me, then who can be against me? And if I could put it in the Sean Wallace remix, uh, I'd say, since God is for me, who cares who's against me? So what? You may not like me. So what? You got it in for me. So what? You might be out to try and destroy me. So what? You don't see my worth and my potential or even support my dream. So what? You might be against me. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And I'm going to make a conscious decision not to focus on how long the night is, but focus on my guarantee that the morning is coming. A songwriter said it'll be all over in the morning. What, what we need to understand and remember is who it is that is for us. The God of the universe is for us. The omnipotent one is for us. The sovereign one is for us. The ancient of days is for us. The one who touched us with a finger of love and woke us up this morning is for us. The one who painted the sky with blue ether and carpeted the ground with green grass is for us. The one that has the world in the palm of his hand, he's for us. And if he is for us, then why should I worry or why should I sweat the haters in our life? Why, why should I worry about somebody who's jealous 
of what I have. Ooh. All right. Why should I worry about what someone thinks of me and what they're trying to do to me? Why should I waste my time on temporal things when the eternal one is for me? Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven and home when Jesus is my portion? A constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow and I know he watches me. That means that no matter what I experience or who I deal with uh, that doesn't like me, I don't have to sweat them because God is for me. Let me move on. Well, preacher, how do you know God is for you? I'm glad you asked because I read verses 28 through 30 and we know that all things, whew, wish I had time, uh, work together for good to them who are the called according to his purpose. See, children of Israel did not know why they had to cross the Red Sea, but God had a purpose. Joshua didn't know why he had to march around Jericho seven times, but God had a purpose. Elijah didn't know why he had to leave his home to go to the lake of Kareth in order to be fed by a raven. But God had a purpose. Jonah didn't know why he had to spend three nights in the belly of a whale. But God had a purpose. Likewise, we don't know why we have the conflicts that we have, the trials that we have, the tribulations we go through, the heartache and the heartbreak that we endure, the issues that we face. But what we are assured of is that God has a purpose for whom he foreknew. He also did predestinate to become conformed to the image of his son that we might be the firstborn among many brethren moreover whom he did predestinate them he also called whom he called them he also justified whom he justified them he also glorified goes on to say um, what you gonna say because if everything is working according to God's purpose and everything is under God's control, then if God is for us, who can be against us? I don't have time. But the Greek construction of this question should be since God is for us, who can be against us? Since God is for us, it doesn't matter if Satan himself is knocking at our door. Since God is for us, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Since God is for us, he's more than the world against us. Since God is for us, we can stand on the promises of our God. Not only is God for us, but then according to the text, we ought to also know that Christ does love us. Okay, um, now, now that may not mean much to you, but that means a whole lot to me. Not only is God for us, but according to the text, Christ does love us. Watch this. Though our love for Christ is sometimes in question, what I'm glad about is that his love for us is never in question. Even when we don't pray like we ought even when we don't study like we ought to, even when we don't commit like we ought to, even when we don't trust and give and serve like we ought to, even when we mess up over and over and over and over and over again, one thing that you and I never have to worry about is whether or not Christ loves us. You can be sure that you know that Christ indeed loves you. Well, preacher, how do you know he loves me? Uh, when I go through what I go through on a daily basis, how do I know that he loves me? When I deal with what I deal with and there seems no relief, how do I know that he loves me? When my dreams are dashed 
and I'm struggling to make ends meet. How do I know that he loves me? Well, here it is. The first reason why I know he loves us is because he created us. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning. Without him was nothing made that was made. And when he created us, he created us in his image. And he created us in his likeness. And he created us for his glory. And he made us just a little lower than the angels. And why would God create something like him if he doesn't love? Not, not, not only that, if that's not enough, another reason why I know he loves us is because he redeemed us. Though he created us, sin caused a separation between the creator and the creation. And the price to redeem us back to him was his blood. It cost the blood of the son of God to buy back men from the slave market of sin. And the shedding of the blood was the price or the rate of our redemption. For the wages of sin was death. And Christ's death, I wish I had somebody, it took Christ's death to subsequently shed his blood so that he could be the substitute for our death. When we couldn't pay it, Christ did. When we couldn't do it, Christ did. Our blood was tainted. Our blood was stained. Our blood was sin-filled. It was impure, unable to take care of sin, inadequate to pay the rate of redemption. So when we were unable on a hill called Calvary. Christ paid it all and all to him we owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed us whiter than snow. Well, if that's not enough, not only did he create us, not only did he redeem us, but according to verse 34, he intercedes for us. It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who makes intercession for you and for me. In essence, that means that Christ is our defense attorney and pleads our case on our behalf before the judge. And every time, I should be punished. And every time we should be condemned. And every time we should be found guilty. Our defense attorney reminds the judge of what he did on Calvary. My case, your case, our case is dismissed because the blood, it reaches to the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley and it shall never lose its power. And because Christ does love us, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Not tribulation, not distress, not persecution, not famine, not nakedness, not peril, not sword. Not COVID-19, not injustice, not racial bias. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God. People of God, love is not shown by doing what the person uh, that is loved wants. But love is shown by what the person who's showing the love deems needed. Can I tell somebody? You go through what you go through because the one who loves you deems it necessary for you to go through and yet he still loves you. So you can be sick, but he still loves you. You can be hurting, but he still loves you. You can be restricted, 
but it still loves you. Heartbroken, confused, all alone, going through, but he still loves you. My brothers and sisters, you don't have to give up and you don't have to give in because God is for us. Christ does love us. But then lastly, the Holy Ghost is with us. And I hear you talking, saying you don't see the Holy Ghost in the text. But the text says in verse 37 that we are more than conquerors. And somebody listening to me needs to know that the only way we can overcome and the only way we can be more than conquerors of every calamity, of every problem, of every circumstance, of every situation, of every issue in our lives is by the aid of he who loves us and the one that's providing the aid. It helps us to be more than conquerors. And this is what I love about it. He lives with us in order to be more than a conqueror. It requires supernatural power. It requires power we don't possess. It requires power that cannot be manufactured. It requires power needed to overcome. And our God specializes in things that seem impossible. And he will do what no other power, holy power, can do. Can I tell y'all, they tell me when an eagle comes up on a storm, he doesn't try to go around the storm. But when an eagle comes up on the storm, he goes straight through the eye of the storm. And while the eagle's flying, sometimes the eagle gets a little weak. Sometimes the eagle wants to give up. But what we don't understand is that the eagle has reserve energy that pushes the eagle above the storm. Can I tell somebody, every time I'm ready to give up, my reserve energy begins to kick in. It's called the Holy Ghost. And he reminds me that everything, I said everything, everything is going to be all right. Every time I want to throw in the towel, the Holy Ghost gives me a little more strength, gives me a little more power. Every time I'm ready to call it quits, the Holy Ghost gives me the energy that I need to make it through. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I'm his own. And the joy that we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Shout yeah. Say yeah. Yeah. Don't give up. Don't you dare give in. Why God is for us. <laughs> Christ does love us. And the Holy Ghost is shown up with us. And can I be honest with y'all today? Sometimes when the weight of the world seems to be on your shoulders and sometimes when you're ready to give up and you're ready to give in you have to rely on that tap on the shoulder from the Holy Ghost that whispers in your ear and reminds you that you don't have to give up because I'm with you I'm with you always even to the end of the world Christ is for God is for us Christ does love us 
and the Holy Ghost is with us. And because of that, we are more than conquerors. We're not just conquerors, but we are more than conquerors. God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we want to say thank you. Thank you for the triune promise that you have shared with us. God is for us. Christ does love us. And the Holy Ghost is with us. Thank you, God, because if we're honest today, there are times when we really do want to give up. We really do want to give in. But thank God for the reminder to let us know that if you're for us, you're more than the world against us. Nothing shall separate us from your love. And we are more than conquerors. God, I pray for somebody under the sound of my voice who's going through right now dealing with some issues in their life that have burdened them down. So much so, Lord, until they're about ready to give up. They're about ready to throw in the towel. They've already said enough is enough. Can't take it no more. But God, thank you for your Holy Ghost who keeps on reminding us that the race is not given to the swift, neither the battle to the strong, but to them that endure till the end. And we don't have to endure alone because we've got company. We've got a partner that walks with us, talks with us, tells us that we are their own. So God, I pray now for that man, that woman, that father, that mother, that child who's about ready to give in. I pray that the Holy Spirit would speak to them now. Remind them, no, never alone. No, never alone. You promise never to leave us alone. Thank you for your word, God. Thank you for your encouragement. I pray that you bless your people now from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. In Jesus' name, let every heart say, Amen. Welcome to the St. John's Baptist Church online giving in one minute demo. If you already have a Simple Give account, be sure to log in with your account information to store your giving in your account history. Let's get started and head over to our church website at www.stjohnscotchplains.org. Once you are on the landing page, you will select the giving tab from the information bar. From here, you will be taken to our Simple Give page. Once on Simple Give, you will select the fund to which you wish to give, such as tithes, benevolence, or other. Next, you will enter the gift amount you wish to give. Lastly, 
please enter your information and press the Submit tab. Once submitted, you will receive immediate confirmation of your gift. On behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Sean T. Wallace Sr., and the St. John's family, we thank you for your gift and pray God's blessings for you and your family.